I've just come away after a visit to the Caliber Educational Foundation and what's happening there is very, very exciting. So I'm at the home of the managing trustee and co-founder Madhuvanti Arun. She founded the school along with her husband Arun. Is this the most logical move since you come from a family of eminent educationists? Uh, I don't know about the logic part of it, but then this came from the heart and uh, Arun and I very strongly felt that the field of education needs a lot more than what it is getting at the moment, considering the number of NRIs who are getting shifted back into Chennai and the number of people moving and the fact that the world is becoming a global village whether we like it or not. So we decided we should have something to do with proactive global citizens and that's the baseline of the Caliber Educational Foundation. And at that point in time, my grandmother, Mrs. YGP, was turning 80. So I also felt very strongly that she started her school in somebody else's name, Padma Seshadri, and there's nothing in her name. Hmm for the amount of things she's done for the field of education here. Yes. So I said, let's do something in her name as well. So we started it off as Mrs. YGP Preschool mm -hmm. Nursery and the Caliber Academy. And Dr. Kalam, who was then the president of India, did the soft launch for us when he came down to greet her for her 80th birthday. So that's how Caliber started. And when you answered my question, because I was going to ask you, why couldn't you have implemented whatever changes in, in uh, Padma Seshadri school? See, what happens is that's a time and tested model. It's been running for 50 years and uh, it's, it's, it's difficult to go and say, Ambassador, suddenly become an Audi 4. Hmm. Not happening. So I said, okay, Ambassador is good. Let me go one step further. They say, Thai, a teddy panja, kutti padina, ready payo. So, it is kutti plus kutti. So, at least, mupatra and teddy payo, no You know, there was an interest. And she was all for it. She said, I think you should try and do this by yourself. She's very meticulous and very hard to please. So, what does she think about it? Oh, she is very yeah. happy, very hmm. proud. And she says, yes, because we said Caliber Educational Foundation and Mrs. YGP. Hmm. So, she said, I hope it's synonymous. I said, watch. Yeah. Today she's a very, very proud grandmother and she says, you've gone beyond being synonymous oh, and I'm very proud of you. That's wonderful hearing yes, that is. from your grandmother yes, who's is. so renowned. Yes. Now, you have until class 6, right Madhu? No, we have until, until class, class 9. nine. Okay. Yes, yes. And it's in four different campuses. Yes, we started off in one campus, but then because we have a totally different concept, we don't have the concept of classrooms. We have what is called learning stations or labs per se. So the children move from lab to lab. Hmm. And uh, at any given point in time, there are two instructors. The lab instructor who is specifically uh, well endowed and well groomed in the subject specific. And the batch instructor who is trained to handle the batch. So they have to keep moving. Hmm. So we can't possibly fit it all into one campus because we need this space. Hmm. So we've made it four campuses within four years of us starting. And what's good is that all these places are very easily accessible. Yes, yes. one street yeah. away from each other technically, so hmm. it's very easily accessible by all of us, hmm. although it is a job. Would you like to tell us the locations? Yes, yes. Uh, we have uh, one in uh, <clears throat> Mailapur in Krishnaswami Avenue, where our pre-KG, pre-kindergarten students and the upper kindergarten and standard one study. We have one on the adjacent lane, Balaya Avenue, where the second and third grade study. Our most latest campus that you just visited yeah. is Roy Petta, where uh, it's an 8,000 square feet building on Avai Shanmugam Salai, where 4th to 9th study. And the lower kindergarten, LKG, study in a little quaint little campus just off Tulsi Silks, which is the Mrs. YGP preschool and nursery. Now, I know that you do a lot of e-learning yes. and computers play a very, yes. very important yes. role. So, will you tell us a little bit about <coughs> this model and the partnership that you yes. have? Yes, we yeah. basically have a partnership with a school in the UK. It's called the Edward Richardson Primary in Tetford, Lincolnshire. We struck this partnership even before Calibre started. So when we started, we had the partnership going. And something very interesting that I found when I visited that school was they had what is called an ICT board. Now mm -hmm. ICT is basically interactive computer technology and it's called the smart board. So it's a touchscreen board where they were able to kind of reinforce what was taught in the other main subjects through audiovisual, through 3D, through games, through graphics and the child's memory and the learning happened much better. Mm -hmm. So we, I saw that there and I said I must have that here and uh, we've created, we've made sure that every campus of ours has a touch screen board, a smart board as we call it and 
we don't have notebooks and textbooks from pre-KG to third grade. That's exactly where I was getting to. Aren't you taking away the tactile and the sensory experience from a child? Because no. this is very debatable. Yeah? Yes, it is. Substitute. But the point is, I have not said we are not having them write at all. They do write in school. Writing is very important, but they have worksheets. They do have reading. They do have a lot of extra reading. But what happens is when I confine it to a set of notebooks and textbooks, that's all is taught and that's all is learned. And I don't like that. I want it to go beyond. And whether we like it or not, the children today are so adept with technology and, 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 and the, the, the current scenario that I'd rather put it to good use than them going into some sites that they shouldn't be seeing. But you know, that's going to be inevitable, Madhu, the, com the computer and the keyboard. Exactly. Because people are forgetting how to write. I don't write anymore. I exactly. can only work on exactly. the computer. Exactly. So, that is inevitable. That is the way forward. It's like, you know, in those days, we had a pigeon sending us messages. Then we had the telephone. Today, we have the cell phone. Can you and I think of living without that cell phone? We can't. Yeah. So we have to go the way forward, but at the same time, we can't not write at all and forget our handwriting. So what kind of balance uh, do See, you what we do is advocate? we have writing. Hmm. We make them write a lot. We make them write journals. We have them writing letters. We have them writing their answers out on the worksheets. But we don't have these 40-page ruled notebooks per se and just the set of prescribed textbooks. They have guidebooks. The teacher has to do a lot of research, go into the library. We have four libraries set up in each of these, I mean, per campus, a library, which is not actually required, but we're doing it because we want the teacher to go right in, do her research, come up with all these worksheets, make sure the child gets to write and read a lot more than what is prescribed per se. Do you have a good old cursive writing? <laughs> uh, I do cursive, but I feel the way forward is print, Anu, because mm. what happens is today, everything is printed in print. You read print. And then you want the child to write cursive. Hmm. Child so gets this. completely confused. But I do cursive writing to develop the handwriting of the child, but that's it. Hmm. I don't hmm. insist upon it, no. And uh, the teachers, now how do you choose them? Do, do they need to have just a B.Ed or what are the qualifications? They have to have their basic degree and fourth upwards, yes, the B.Ed is required. But the first prerequisite is they have to have it in them hmm. to be a teacher. Because some of the top PhDs can be the worst of teachers. We've had those experiences yes. while growing up. <laughs> yeah. But we have to make sure that they have it in them to be a teacher. So I handpick my teachers. Hmm. I make sure I have conversations with them time and again to make sure they're in the right track. Because here in Calibre, the system is totally different. They have to be e computer savvy. They have to do a lot more research than what they would have probably done if it was a set prescribed uh, set of textbooks. Fourth upwards, yes, we do follow CBSC because that is a prerequisite. But again, we have our own research and development happening. We don't follow the same textbook every year. We change our textbooks. We are only guidebooks and the homework is uploaded fourth upwards. So there's a lot of work for the teacher here. And uh, do your teachers undergo training? Yes, yes we train do. them. We train them once we take them on. There is about two to three months of training happening. By people who come from the UK? Or yes, we yes. have them. We train yeah. them ourselves also. We have a bunch of people. The, the senior teachers here who are into the groove already hmm. start training their junior counterparts. And of course, we have our exchange programs happening regular between the UK school and our school. So it's, it's constantly in touch. We video conference at least once in two months. We video conference with our UK counterparts. We do the ICT curriculum is completely correlated with the UK school. So there's a lot of lot of technical well, stuff. Uh, you do you do see Mrs. YGP's passion in her <laughs> granddaughter. <laughs> well, Probably I, more. Oh my more. God! <laughs> you you've made my day. <laughs> so when we come back after the break, Madhuvanti will tell us what kind of role her grandmother played in her life, her dad. I mean, she comes from such an illustrious family. Okay. But uh, so we have a lot to talk about. Stay tuned to Off the Record.